Ever since I started using Minjourney professionally, I've wanted to make this video covering some of the use cases of AI in my field of work, which is YouTube thumbnails. I briefly talked about it in one of my videos from three months ago, but I never actually got around to make a dedicated video on it until now. So buckle up, this should be interesting. The day after Photoshop released this update, I made a demo video and posted it to Twitter. Let's check it out. Photoshop received a pretty big update yesterday, so I wanted to test out the new generative art feature. Let's use this Mr. Beast thumbnail for example. I'll start by adding a well-cooked steak on his plate. Next, I'll replace this text in the top right and add a photo frame instead. After that, let's turn this regular silver fork into a golden one. The great thing about this feature is that you can go back anytime and change the results you initially got. And on top of that, you can also generate new versions without having to manually select that area again. For example, I want this photo frame to be golden, so let's just generate it again. And for the end, let's try adding a glass of water in the bottom left corner. If you ask me, these results are extremely great considering it was all done in a few minutes. And 90% of the whole process was just waiting for the AI to get it done. Absolutely incredible. My initial reaction was pretty much this scene from The Office. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait! Everybody just calm down! I simply knew this was the point in time that would divide my artist career in before and after, which totally makes sense as this is easily the biggest upgrade to Photoshop since the introduction of Layers feature that happened 100 years ago. If by any chance you're in doubts as to why this is such a big deal, let me just briefly talk about the functionalities. With Generative Fill, you can do the following. Generate objects and backgrounds simply through a text prompt. You can extend images or remove undesired objects from them. If you're not feeling creative, you can always generate things without a prompt, which will create a harmonious extension of your scene. And the best thing about generative fill is how quickly it gets the job done. It makes me feel excited like never before. But on the other side, there is a slight dose of fear. This won't happen yet, but some people are going to lose gigs and their part-time jobs. I'm optimistic this won't happen to me, but if I was just starting out, there would be a big question mark above my head, that's for sure. But I don't want this video to be a negative look at this new technology. I want to embrace it, as it will help boost my design workflow, and I'm here all for it. And if you're watching this video, then we probably share the same sentiment. I mean, do you see what's happening on the screen? These results are absolutely incredible. It's crazy to think all this is happening inside Photoshop non-destructively, where you can easily switch between the options and continue working on your project without any issues. I guess the waiting time can be a bit annoying, but we're talking about 10 to 15 seconds here that can save you up to 15 or 20 minutes of manual work, or maybe even more if it's a complex edit. I'm sorry, but I have to repeat myself again. This is absolutely incredible. So are there any downsides? Well, considering it's the first release and it's already better than anything else out there for so many things, there's not much I can say against it. Perhaps the quality isn't really the best once you try to generate new art and selection bigger than 1024 pixels on the longer side, but there is an easy workaround for this. You just need to split your big selection into smaller ones and you've got yourself a good quality result. And also worth mentioning, apparently once this feature is released for commercial use, you'll get a certain amount of credits, which you can spend on generative art. Once you're out of these credits, you'll be able to purchase additional plans for more. Honestly, this is pretty wild to me. As everyone's been paying premium prices for their products since the release of Creative Cloud, this AI feature should already be unlimited in my opinion. This is by the way not yet 100% confirmed, I'm just saying what I heard from other people who apparently work closer with Photoshop employees. In any case, as of right now, it's fully unlimited and you can access it through the Photoshop beta app. And I encourage you during this time to use it as much as you can to test all of its possibilities. This is going to reshape creativity and unleash boundless possibilities. The future of design and photo manipulation looks very, very exciting. Midjourney has been around for a while now and you've most likely seen some of the generated images that went viral. Former President of the United States, Donald Trump running away from police and the whole sequence of getting arrested and then staying inside the prison. Or maybe you've seen that extremely popular fake photo of Pope Francis wearing Balenciaga. And did you know that someone has won a photo competition by using an AI-generated image? Now that's a crazy story if I ever heard one. It's become so easy for anyone to generate realistic fake photos that I simply have to show you one example. Let's recreate the Pope wearing Balenciaga. Well, that was quick.
And with this technology being available to public, it was just waiting to be used in YouTube thumbnails. Let's see some examples. The first ever AI-generated thumbnail I saw was from this MKBHD video, which was uploaded exactly one year ago. This was the time when DALI 2 was available through beta system and everyone started talking about it. I partly blame him for popularizing the AI text-to-photo tools, but if it wasn't him, someone else would have committed the same sin instead. So, no harsh feelings there. Let's see some real-life use cases. Naturally, you can expect most of the creators covering AI topics to have their thumbnails partly or fully made by an AI. One of them is Matt Wolf. His thumbnails are mostly a mix of AI backgrounds and AI-generated photos of him, which is really cool. The most recent video from the editing podcast channel was AI-related, and I thought the comparison between the real and AI version of Hayden Hillier Smith was executed pretty well. Combine their photos with the intriguing text in the middle, and you got yourself an interesting thumbnail. One more example I'd like to show is Corridor Crew's transformation thumbnails. It's so interesting to see not just the usual before and after, but the additional two steps from in between. Okay, these examples were pretty obvious. The fun part is when someone uses AI for their thumbnails, but you're not aware of it. These three from the Burt Chip, for example. In the first one, the whole background is completely AI generated. Link below if you want to watch the breakdown. In the second one, I used an AI to readjust the lighting on his head. Definitely not something you'd expect to work so easily, but it did. And in the third one, the background is completely AI generated as well. Next up, we have three Sidemen thumbnail examples. Can you guess which three elements are AI generated in this one? Pause the video now and comment down below with your guesses. If you guess both gold inflatables on the left and the whole background on the right, you are correct. Here is how it came out of mid-journey, and here's the whole design process that my fellow thumbnail designer friend posted on his Twitter account. Really interesting. Next up is the Sidemen's Extreme Hot vs. Cold Camping video. In this thumbnail, all these elements are in AI-generated images, which is like 80% of the thumbnail. Everything else is real, and this cactus here is just a PNG image from Google. And in this third thumbnail, the two AI-generated elements are KSI's body and the chair that he's sitting on. The next two examples are thumbnails done by TKG. This is the first thumbnail done for the video titled I Investigated UFO Crash Sites Across America. When someone asked if the crash shook was done by an AI, he responded with this before and after photo. I love this approach because he's not just placing it in the background, he's editing it as he said himself extensively. And you can really tell a lot of work went into this one. But just wait till we inspect the second thumbnail. It was made for the video titled, I Stayed in the World's Weirdest Hotels. So this is the finished thumbnail, and this is the base image that was generated with mid-journey. And these are all the other images generated for this one thumbnail. If my math is correct, there are 168 individual images here, which equates to 42 mid-journey prompts. Absolutely incredible work. And he also shared the process. So here's that as well. And let's show some Mr. Who's the Boss thumbnails that I've recently worked on. AI usage in these thumbnails was pretty light, but very useful nonetheless. For example, this video is called, I Bought the World's Rarest Phones. In the thumbnail, everything was edited manually, except the background. The original background just didn't look good enough to fit the premise of the video, so I did what I had to do. I generated some luxury indoor shots that we could add in there. This one looked the most promising, so we went for it. It needed to be very subtle for what we intended, so we toned it down quite a bit. Sure, we could have taken some free stock photo from the internet and used it, but this approach feels way more fun, and you can be more creative with it. This video is yet to be released, but we also have a small dose of AI stuff in here. The topic of the video is reviewing cool gadgets seen on TikTok. Sure, these gadgets look fun in real life, but their packages are not very nice to look at, especially these three on the right. So, to make it look cooler, I just added some adjectives to gadget names and then ran it through the mid-journey. And what came out really did look cooler. Just look at the comparison here. The video for this one is also yet to be released and I don't want to spoil anything, but I should point out some of the stuff in here. This fire smoke on the left is AI generated because it was quicker to get it with mid-journey than go on Google and search for a good fit, or even worse, do it manually. Sure, I have these smoke brushes, which makes this job fairly easy to do, but with mid-journey the process is simply faster and sometimes you just need to deliver the project before the deadline. And also, the whole slimy and shiny part of the thing around the neck was created by an AI too. Follow me on Twitter, at the Joseph Blaze, if you'd like to see a breakdown. One more thumbnail from Mr. Who's the Boss that I'd like to showcase is this one. I don't know who made it, but my speculation is that the whole pile of these phones was generated in mid-journey. Because you can notice some of the artifacts when you zoom in. And when you spend a lot of time generating these images, you just start recognizing the patterns. Speaking of patterns, I can tell you that probably every single thumbnail on this channel is generated in mid-journey. When you have a channel that allows this type of freedom with thumbnails, it would be a shame not to make full use of a powerful tool such as Midjourney. It can generate you a hundred different angles of one idea in any style imaginable, which is perfect for testing different thumbnails. Thanks for watching.